Before this video starts, I just want to give people a warning. This video is to show you how to change a camshaft position sensor, which is this here. When I've done a bit more research, I found out that there's a thing called timing chain stretch. And what happens is the timing chain actually stretches due to heat and so on. And the camshaft sh just shifts slightly so it doesn't line up with the second camshaft, with the two camshafts. So um, what happens is they're just slightly off and that will give you your codes. You'll get all different types of codes, mainly sensor codes like that. If you are having an issue with knock sensors, uh, camshaft position sensors, and it maybe a knocking and a sluggish engine doesn't really want to go, um, make sure that you get your time and chain checked first before you do anything else. If this video helps you in any way, please, please like the video. I'm trying to put this in at the start of the video so that um, it will stop people from looking at the wrong video and thinking that they can change this themselves or, or, or do a little small job and it's all fixed. I'm trying to warn people before they get into this because there's not many videos out there that are warning people about this. Yeah, so if you're here just to watch how to change a camshaft position sensor, continue watching the video. Thank you. Yo, my name is Gavin, this is GPTV and in the previous video you would have seen that I had an engine light on my Honda CRV. So today I'm going to change that engine light to not an engine light. I'm going to I'm going to change the sensor. This is a camshaft position sensor. This cost me about 70 euro. This little small thing cost me 70 euro. It runs very sluggish. So I'll put my foot down and it won't really move that fast. It does move, it does go, it does drive, but it's not really that fast compared okay, it's not fast anyway. But it does move. It's very sluggish like it's it should be a lot more responsive than that. And then it, it jitters as well. It goes, it jitters around as you're um, as you're accelerating. It jitters around a bit. So when I change this sensor, this should all be a lot better afterwards. Hopefully, anyway, this should be a lot better afterwards. It's not too hard to do. You just have to take your air box out. All it is here. I don't have an improvise here. I don't have the right tools for this job. So I have an extension, and an extension, and an extension. Okay, this didn't work because it just kept twirling and I can't even show you but it just kept twirling around so try this okay that didn't work either okay I found a half inch with an adapter with an extension with an 8 mil on the end of it so hopefully this works it's working yay it worked Right, so I've removed all of these screws here. Remove this clamp. I've already loosened this as well, by the way. Now, this is very hard to do with one hand. But this should pop out now, there we go. This is the sensor I'm gonna be changing. Um, I should be able to get in here with a, a small extension or something, rather than taking this all off. I don't really wanna take all this off. Okay, I have one of these spanners, and it should just fit in right there. Yeah. So I'm gonna work away on this here. Just pull. It up. There we go. I just want to take out this plug here as well. Right. So these two sensors are exactly the same. And this is the exhaust sensor, and this is the intake sensor. But I don't know which one it is. I think this is bank one. I'm gonna change this one. I was gonna change this one, but I think this is the one. I didn't know they were exactly the same till until I took it off. But I'm going to change this one because I'd reckon this is bank one and this is bank two. But we'll find out. Right, I just want to see is this exactly the same before I go open in this plastic because I can't return it then. So I think that's the right one. You'll also see that there's oil on the top of this. So what you need to do is put a little bit of oil onto the top of it. If you don't have any oil at hand, you should just open open your um, your oil cap, take some off that and just rub it around where the o-ring is.
no, 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 no. Just tighten it a little bit, not, not over tight. So now you put your sensor back in. Put your other sensor back in. And then I'm just gonna put everything all back in here now and turn the engine over and see what happens. Okay, now I've cleared all the codes. Now the moment of truth. Now if that comes back on, BOLA! Okay, turns out it wasn't that one. It was the back one. I'm gonna just change it with the original one that I still have. I just cleaned all the oil off of it. I'm just gonna change it and see will that work because there was no issues with this one. Now I've changed that um, for the old one and I'm just gonna put everything back in now again and then uh, erase the codes. But you can also erase the codes from in here if you don't have a code reader. Clear the code completely. Leave it for about 10 to 20 seconds. Whether you take the fuse out or you do it on your code reader, leave it for about 10 to 20 seconds. And then the engine light goes off and stays off. See? So the engine light is now off and the car is a lot better. It's, yeah, it's much more torquey now. Still doesn't feel great, but uh, it's, it could be just down to dirty injectors or something because the, the car has been sitting around for a while so yeah it's much better at pulling now much better so um, I think it's fixed only time will tell seems to be fixed thanks very much for watching please come back for more because there will be more on this and um, take care. Bye bye now. So that was the end of the video. But then a day later, the light came back on again. And I had to change the other sensor for a brand new sensor. And the light came back on again. So look at the start of the video. Thanks. Please like the video. Please comment. Thanks. Bye. This ain't over.